Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope everyone's doing well. My name is Zenzo and you're watching Tozawa Tanks. So today's video is a video that uh, I think is uh, gonna spark a lot of conversation. This is a very controversial subject. I've been thinking about it for quite some time as far as filming and making a video to talk about it but uh, just decided to not do it at that time. And uh, I finally just said, you know, what the heck, I'm gonna film the video and uh, we'll just see what comes. So uh, that subject is hybrids. So that's right, folks, we're talking about hybrids. Now, when we talk about hybrids, we are not talking about uh, like a flower horn. We're not talking about a blood parrot. We are talking about African cichlid hybrids. Now, generally speaking, when you think of a hybrid, you are thinking about two different animals, two different species that were able to mate and produce offspring, uh, such as like a lion and a tiger, which would uh, present uh, or uh, create a, a liger as an example, or um, you might have a horse and a donkey uh, that would create a mule. So those are some examples of hybrid animals. Um, I did mention the flower horn, the blood parrot, and generally when you do have a hybrid, they cannot reproduce because they are two different species that were able to produce young, but those young are usually sterile. Now with African cichlids, it's different, and uh, that is one of the uh, controversies around African cichlids is the fact that they do not become sterile and they are able to breed. So when you have an African cichlid that is a hybrid, it's not two different species, but rather two different genuses. So it's really, um, they're both Alanacara. If, for example, in the, in, the, uh, in the peacock world, they're both Alanacara, or if they're haps, they're both Haplochromis, or if they're Mbuna, they're both Mbuna. So they're still the same species of fish. Um, they just have some different characteristics about them that uh, make up their particular um, type of Alanacara, or peacock, etc. So when we're talking about hybrids with African cichlids, they're usually pretty easy to identify because a lot of them um, display what's called OB, OB setting for orange blot. So if you see here, um, this guy right here is an OB. He's very clearly um, a mixture. He's got blues and oranges and uh, some whites in him, some silver. This one's an OB here as well, a hybrid. Um, but some hybrids are not easy to identify. So one of the reasons why I don't talk about my fish species so much is because I am not 100% certain that they are pure fish. Now, a lot of African cichlid hobbyists are purists, and, uh, and I totally appreciate that and can understand why. They want to ensure that the lineage of the fish um, maintains intact. So if you have, uh, you know, autopharynx lithobates, you don't want to mix those with other fish because you want to keep their bloodline intact so that they continue to be in the hobby as they were intended uh, without uh, any, not contamination, but without any crossbreeding from another species. However, with my African cichlids, because I did not buy them from a specific breeder that could assure me that they were F1s, F1 meaning first generation of uh, offspring from wild caught or F2s or F3s, um, I got them from local fish stores, I got them um, from people I know, and oftentimes those are bred in large fish farms in Florida and Asia, etc. So there is no way for me to be 100% certain that one of my fish is in fact a pure uh, you know, uh, type of African cichlid. So I don't talk a whole lot about my species. So for example, I do have some Xerox in here, the, the uh, lithobates in here. And um, there's one there in the back, there's another one here. And I'm like 90% sure that they are what they are, but uh, sometimes I think maybe there's a little bit of something else in them. So um, I don't talk specifically about the species because I don't want to upset anybody or lead anybody on. Now with hybrids, my personal opinion is I love them. So I am a fish keeper that enjoys the, the activity of keeping fish. I love the personality that the fish display. I love the colors that they display. And it's just something that I enjoy. Um, I am not out to, um, for example, with African cichlids, you know, ensure a bloodline. There are a lot of other people that do that and they do a great job and I applaud them for it, but that's not my uh, personal practice. And even with my breeding, a lot of people think that it's uh, almost sacrilegious that I'm breeding African cichlids and they're not purebred African cichlids. And the fact is the people that I'm selling them to, the fish stores, don't care. There, there's not a demand for um, F1s and F2s um, at the local fish stores. And generally those fish that are, um, 
you know, purebred are being sold online and, and sold at fish clubs. And for me, when I'm breeding, you know, and selling a hundred fish at a time, I'm just selling, you know, various types of African cichlids. I'm selling them at wholesale. So I'm not getting a lot of money for them. So again, the local fish store doesn't care. They just want to get some nice, healthy, colorful, colorful fish that they can then turn and uh, sell to um, the public that are just, again, looking for colorful looking fish. So as I shared, I do enjoy um, hybrids. I think that uh, all of them are beautiful for them. You know, most of them are beautiful. Of course, you know, sometimes you have an ugly duckling, but uh, for the most part, they're really good looking. Um, even uh, serious fish keepers that do uh, keep a lot of pure fish, um, will also have hybrids available and some of those are very popular. So as an example, some of you may be familiar with uh, the Cichlid Shack down in Arizona. I actually happened to visit the Cichlid Shack last year when I was down in Arizona on business. Popped in, James was there, he let me walk around and, and look at all the fish. Beautiful fish, great tanks. He has a lot of wild caught fish, a lot of F1s, F2s, and also is looking to you know further the bloodlines of those fish to make sure that they stay in the hobby as they were intended but he also has some hybrids he has some OBs um, he has one famous one in his shop called Skittles it's a beautiful uh, OB uh, peacock so um, again you know I think that there is a spot in the hobby for hybrids to be enjoyed and uh, I think that sometimes when you have someone that you know basically uh, you know, browbeats you and, and tells you that uh, hybrids don't belong in the hobby I don't think that they have a very open mind so anyway, that's my feeling on hybrids. I love them. Uh, I do appreciate, again, uh, you know, pure bread and pure line fish. Um, and, I, and I do appreciate those. I just don't happen to have any uh, for certain as far as my uh, Malawi cichlids. Now I do have some, some pure bread uh, fish, other fish that I have, like my, um, all of my uh, multifasciatus or pure bread as an example, of course. But, uh, but here in my Malawi tank, these are, um, you know, maybe there are some that are pure, but uh, I can't say for certain that they are, so I don't claim them to be. So anyway, I'd love to hear your comments down below. I do expect an avalanche of comments, good ones, bad ones. If you do have something uh, not so nice to say, that's fine, just keep it clean, because if you do put any swear words and things like that, um, my auto, uh, I've got like a robot that checks all of the uh, comments and it won't, it won't allow it to get posted if you're putting swear words and things like that in there. So anyway, Keep it fun, keep it PG, and uh, love to read your comments below, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.